Hello everyone, so Cross Progression has of course merged a bunch of accounts, a lot of accounts being old ones, and I actually have an account here which has a bunch of the old pack collections on it, so I thought it'd be quite fun to kind of do a trip down memory lane, take a look at the collections, and actually open the packs. So we'll start with the Rengoku one, obviously this event was only a few seasons ago, but honestly when taking a look at this collection, I am actually reminded by how good a collection this actually was. A lot of R6 skins are really hit or miss recently, so for this event to have so many skins, Skins looked look really good. It was quite something nice to see. Now, of course, you have all the weapon skins for all the guns. You had the universal one we've seen at the start. You had the universal attachment skin. And of course, this is when player cards were starting to be introduced into packs as well. With the first time, I actually believe was the Snow Brawl event, if I'm not wrong, which we're actually going to jump over to now and take a look at. Now, for you guys who don't know, Ubisoft did recently announce that these packs will be coming back very soon with some new content added to them. But as you can see here, they've actually not updated it yet. It is still the old version of the packs. And once again, Again, I thought these had some pretty cool cosmetics in it, I won't lie. Of course, they were all Christmas themed, so you could only kind of use them at one time of the year. Some sets like the Vigil ones kind of worked around all the time of the year and stuff like that, but it was really cool. This was the first time I think we had Thorn and Osa in event packs. And of course, they also brought back the Ash and Montang set, which were previously only available if you had every operator and you got a free pack at the end of the year. You had a really cool 3D weapon skin for the Uzi. I actually have that on my main account, a really nice weapon skin. I had one for Montang Shield, of course, all of the primary weapons as well, despite their not being actually any guns in the event itself. You had this white attachment skin, which actually came out before the white attachment skin was a thing. So there's sort of two different white attachment skins in this game. And like I said, if I'm not wrong, this was the first event that actually had player cards in it, which was, you know, quite controversial. I do like player cards, but I won't lie. I think they do kind of clutter up the packs a bit. I wish that you could just buy a bundle outside of the packs with the player cards in it. I think that would be pretty cool. Of course, you had this really nice background as well. And of course, charms. I'm not really a fan of charms in packs either, but I guess there is a place for them in there. Now, containment packs, we won't spend too long in this because these also did just come back a few weeks ago at this point of course nothing new has been added here you still got all the skins and stuff like that when it did come back a few weeks ago though they did add the new player cards to it so that was pretty cool uh so yeah nothing really new here we did see these packs return not too long ago so we won't spend too much on this now the apocalypse event this might be an event a lot of you guys might have forgotten about i really did not like this event it was really not that good it kind of just felt like outback 24 7 if that's a good way of putting it the event itself kind of just played like a normal match of siege but i won't lie a lot of the cosmetics were really cool this one for uh fuse was really cool everyone like called him darth vader when it came out and stuff like that and the smoke set was really nice as well the cosmetics actually weren't really that bad for this event but the event itself was pretty boring it just was kind of like outback 24 7 because no one really played the objective they all just went for kills and when you don't really play the objective in an event mode and just go for kills then it kind of just plays like a normal match of siege uh no player cards in this because this event hasn't returned ever since player cards got added so if this event does come back one day and these packs to come back there will definitely be player cards for all of these skins as well doctor's curse as well we're not really going to go into depth here we did see this event very recently when halloween was a thing nothing new in here since then it's all the same stuff since then so yeah doctor's curse packs are in here as well now the showdown collection we haven't seen this one for a while really cool cosmetics in this one i did like the showdown event and collection quite a bit you do notice that it is sort of the same operators in all these events we did just see in like the apocalypse event there was one for twitch and maverick and rook and maestro i do really wish that there was more diversity when it comes to the operators who are in these events because i swear there's some operators that just haven't even had a chance in an event before and a lot of the time it does feel like it is the same operators getting the limelight which i guess makes sense the more popular the operator the more likely you are to get sales but i just wish there was more operator diversity in these event packs and of course no player cards in this yet but if this event ever does come back they will add the player cards to it but yeah the showdown one's definitely not that bad and the final one you have here is of course rainbow is magic not many operators are actually in these packs now this event did actually return for a second time and they didn't add any new operator skins to it but what they actually did was they added more weapon skins so before there wasn't actually a skin for like tachanka's dp27 and stuff like that or like the smg11 they added way more weapon skins than there was before but this is easily one of the smallest collections in the game so the fact that most of it is weapon skins and charms isn't really that good i think we are all waiting for player cards for this because having a unicorn tachanka player card is going to be sick and yeah this is 100 percent going to return soon because the drone skins just got announced for this season and they were actually out this season and we do know that drone skins did originate from this event so they're 100% going to capitalize on that and bring these packs back so they can sell the drone skin. So now that we've looked through the packs, let's open them and see what we get in them. So we'll start off with the Rengoku one. Let's see what we get. We actually get a purple and we actually get the player card background. I personally really like player cards and player card backgrounds. Like I said, I think uh, they kind of clutter up the packs, but it is something quite cool to get. Okay, so that is the Rengoku one out of the way. Let's take a look at the Snowbrawl one. Let's see what we get in here. And we actually get the Headgear 
for Rook. Pretty cool. He's of course meant to be a Yeti, so that's quite nice. Of course, the containment ones, which did actually return pretty recently, and we get the attachment skin, which is actually universal, so that is actually really cool, because we can use that with any weapon skin. So there we go, there's the attachment skin. Moving on, let's go to the Apocalypse pack. Really cool pack collection. I really like this one. We get a Legendary. Oh, we actually get the headgear from Maestro. I have this on my main account and it looks really cool. I really like this headgear. And something really cool about this headgear as well, when you're actually on Maestro's camera and you look at him with his headgear, his headgear kind of illuminates these colors where the rest of his body is kind of just green with the green tint from the camera. Yeah, it's a really cool headgear. I really like this one. Right, Doctor's Curse. Again, this pack collection did return recently, so... Nothing amazing in here. And we actually get the Azami player card. That's really cool. I really like the Azami set from these packs. I do think, though, that Doctor's Curse is getting a bit repetitive. I do hope that we do get a different Halloween event next year. Right, the Showdown one. I wonder what we're going to get for this. We get a purple? Oh, we get a uniform for Twitch. That's really cool, actually. I quite like the rugged design on it. I mean, it's quite fitting of the name, Rugged Ranger. Yeah, I really hope that pack collection returns soon as well. And finally, we have a Rainbow is Magic pack. I wonder what we're going to get in here. We get a purple. And we actually get the skin for Montang Shield. Quite a cool little Easter egg here as well. The shield says, don't shoot my papillons. I believe that's how it's pronounced. And if we look at the collection, Montang's headgear is butterflies. And papillons, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, is butterfly in French. So it means don't shoot my head because his head has butterflies on them. Which is quite a funny little thing to put on the uh, shield. It's quite funny. So guys, those are the exclusive packs which we got via cross progression from an old account. Really cool to see a lot of those collections again. Hopefully they all do return in the future and you guys get a chance to buy them. Hope you guys did enjoy this video. Be sure to subscribe for more. I love you all. Catch you all later. Peace.